Yeah, with the queen now placed, has one healer on her. Probably the healer puppet if he pops any more. Is this going to be a queen charge? Lalo, as we got an early, early warden with the balloons and the blimp, the fly cross. Oh, uh, that's a tough question. Let's <laughs> <laughs> that, that, uh, let's get back onto the okay, game, shall we? Okay, all right. Well, I guess we're going to the game. One day we'll, we'll get the answer from Coco. She's sneaking around us here. We we need to figure this out. But either way, it's you. Let's see what Achilles can do with the warded ability going straight off here to protect, and it's the overgrowth. That's right. The overgrowth. Is it going to work for? Early attack is going to work for Achilles on this one with the attack going in quick versus those first couple of defenses. The thing though is, I feel like the overgrowth, I'm not sure how much value it has because it should run out really soon. So I'm not sure if he gained all the value he was looking for or not because the overgrowth now is gone. Yeah, with this town hall being completely frozen and he's now pushing it in through, does still have that king ability to help. Get to the town hall. Queen ability does go off. Taking out the bomb tower. Going to be able to reach and go for that multi-target inferno. As these super barbarians are coming down to the bottom side. But the eagle is still raining shots on down. Yes, the eagle is getting some shots in. But I feel like it's... Or is it too late? The royal champion is going down. She has no ability left anymore. The barbarian king is dropping low from the expo. The hog riders are trying their uh -oh. best. But they just died as well can oh, the wow. king tank that's not the question can the king tank for the hogs no the expo is going to retarget and this means the air defense that's something really key to go down because of the phoenix no the invisibility like the we see another defense what's going on mm, wow so these top teams here are having an answer against root riders you know, when you, everyone talks about, oh, there's no bases that can defend, but it's the tiniest of details that we would need to literally do an interview with Stefan and the builders of Tribe to say, what are you guys doing to stop this attack that other people are not realizing? It? Is, is it the location of a tornado trap? Is it the location of your spring traps that we can't see unless it's activated? Whereas some other defenses you can see, obviously, just from the layout of the base, his Achilles, unfortunately, is falling short with a 94%. And not even time fail, it falls short straight up. And that is a huge defense here for Tribe. And they haven't failed a single attack. Uh, now I'm now I'm now realizing as I'm <laughs> saying it. They haven't failed a single attack in the group stage or even in the first match here today in the playoffs. So good luck now trying to win against Tribe that's been perfect every hit here so far. I mean, I have, I have to laugh so bad because <laughs> as soon as you started your sentence, you notice where you're heading and you try to like turn Whoops. it around, but it didn't work anymore. But hey, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. So far, we were not able to jinx stripes. They were just too good uh, on offense. Defense as well. You said, um, what about asking the base builders right there? Uh, for example, from Stefan. Typically, he's quite humble. So he's like saying probably something like, yeah, we're not testing that much. It's just <laughs> like, I don't know, it's just happening. I mean, obviously, it's not the case, but um their de bases are defending great today he's as well right yeah. now really high up on legends which i guess really helps to understand what type of different root rider attacks there are because i mean everyone who is right now a legend knows root riders are everywhere it's really crazy and um i think it might be a little on the stronger side so that's yeah. the reason being high on legend is really beneficial because you see how others are attacking you see what things are working or what people are struggling against and i think so far tribe has done a great job like transitioning that over into those pro matches and now we have chronos in but again with the root uh, with the overgrowth spell but it's not a ring base or core tunnel base it's a box base yeah with those root riders coming across we have the warden that can help protect everything into the town hall straight up as the queen will make her way all the way to the top side run around as we have a super dragon coming out of the clan castle remember the clan castle and the defensive heroes are the only things that do not get affected by the overgrowth spell as that king is going to go right on by and then we'll have to somehow come back and deal with the town hall later as the warden ability did go off protected as he's making his way into the defensive king super minions did come out of the siege barracks now as the king ability goes off he needs to loop his way back all the way to this town hall 
Okay, I was expecting them using the overgrowth spell for the back end or for the tunnel compartment, but I think most of the rooters are gone, right? I mean, mm -hmm. wait. Uh, I, I'm not expert with the strategy, I have to say, so I'm not really sure how happy he is right now. I guess the unicorn doing a great job of keeping the queen alive. Has to freeze the town hall now, the ability is still there, I think he's fine. He can reach the town hall, the royal champion coming over, but there's still some key defenses left behind. There are the multi arch towers and the ground expos, and no, I, I, it's not my fault, guys. This is not, <laughs> we still got Pekka's, he still got a, oh no, the Pekka's very low health. Oh, okay. Oh, no. I just said in the okay. set, the tribe is unjinxable. I, I mean, we, we did the quadruple jinx. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um there seems to be a little bit of a, a something um yeah no that's not my fault i i didn't no chronos failing 95 percent. there's something wrong with i need i think i need my glasses there, that can't that can't happen after all what 35 attacks or so in a row it seems like or maybe it was 30 yeah i think it was 35 in a row they finally fail in their 36th attack which now means that this war is all tied up but the average, well, the percentage does go in Tribe's favor. So they got the lead just by that much, just by a little bit. And that's, wow, a 14 star war from Tribe now is, that's surprising. That's right. They have the one building or more like 1% lead right now. It's back to early attacks. Can they three star now? They're not bringing the overgrowth spell anymore. They had enough. They are just going in without it. Instead, they're bringing the, is it five? I think it's a ton of. Skeleton spells to distract out of those thing Inferno Towers. Equipment-wise, we're going in with the pretty much same combination for um, King, Queen, and Warden, which we have seen over the day. And the Royal Champion, that's where we have the most, I guess, like, dif difference in decisions regarding the equipment. This time it's Haze Vial with the Hog Rider equipment. Yeah, as Ice Golems have now come out of the defense of Clan Castle, Queen's making her way through the defense of King to the top side as he continues his way into the town hall. No overgrowth here, so he's gonna power through the town hall and gonna be able to help try to push through the town hall poison as a poison spell is launched near the town hall. So he's got to go through the poison spell first and then the town, the town hall poison as well, which is gonna take a lot of damage as the Royal Champion is also trying to move through this base as well, but two single target Infernos are waiting here as the RC's ability has already gone off. What is happening right now? I mean, it's like, this is the upper bracket, um, and both of those teams are one match away of <laughs> qualifying for the finals. And both teams are just not three star right now. I, I'm, I'm just surprised um, with how many defense we see right now, especially with the root riders. We have yeah. more troops on the back end trying to pick up some percentage, but it's another defense. The Roya, unfortunately today, is not having his best day. Two fails um, in this in this playoff stage and. It's going to be a 91% two-star. Well, they're going for speed here, and unfortunately, not even getting a triple. So I I would never have guessed this in a million years. A 10 all 16 meta here. Fail, fail, fail. Three attacks coming in, back to back to back. Not a single triple between the two teams of Tribe Gaming and Early Attacks. Wait, is this is this the title 15? This doesn't seem right. What is happening here? But okay, here's the ultimate test. You ready? Hold on. I got to I got to stretch for this one. You ready? Okay. Tribe will 100% oh, no. get a 3 star in the next attack. There you go. They, they, there's no way. There's no way that they can there could be four fails in a row. It just can't. It can't. So, okay. There we go. I'm going to test it out. Can you call the strategy <laughs> as well if you like ask your, your <laughs> class or your, like I don't know. What is the strategy? Mm. The strategy, ooh, that's a great question. I'm gonna go Root Riders. I'm gonna go Valkyries. Um, that's I, unexpected. I, uh, very yeah. unexpected, yeah, very unexpected. And I'm gonna go with some crazy here. There's gonna be, he's gonna, he's gonna also go Overgrowth as well, you know? It's gonna, no. it's, it's, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, okay, I can, now, I now, you're, now you're making things up. I think that's, that's <laughs> way too crazy. Um, <laughs> But mm -hmm. whatever they're bringing, they should for now go for a save three stars. No, ex like, oh, no, oh, 
Oh, hmm. Carbon, okay. you, you're a magician. So we know at this uh, point already that it's going to be guaranteed a three star because uh, you yeah. got everything correct at this point. No, but yeah, I, yeah. Without, without joking, <laughs> um, we have Yo-Yo coming in. He was really quick with his latest uh, attack in the first match they had. The freezes are in. And I'm wondering, are they using the overgrowth now on the back end? Or what mm. exactly is going to plan on this one? Is he going to use it again for the tower? Because it seems like so far, he is not. Oh, yeah, the tunnel is going to go down with the warden ability. Down it goes. Is he going to path his way to the eagle in about 28 seconds or less? Because you got to wait for the time of the overgrowth to disappear as they're wrapping around. Super hogs are coming out of that siege barracks as he is continuing to power on through as the queen is making her way to the top side, still has her ability. Yeah, the ability for sure can be helpful for the back end. Now the Rage Tower is going off and take a look at that. Everything is stacked around the Rage Tower. He has to use Freezers now to somehow overpower this Rage area. Rage Towers are still insanely, insanely strong if set up correctly, which is just an absurd amount of damage. The Royal Champion with her ability has another Freeze, which he can use, but Garin, I think you were right. Tribe is not fading back to back. This is going Maybe. to be a three star. And, um,. Yeah, the Queen Frozen Arrow and everything is still, it's still on there. Royal Champion cruising through with her speedy add-on. And that's going to be a nice three-star. And you thought I was going to jinx. <laughs> no way. I, there was no way there was going to be four fails in a row of a match of this caliber here. Well, Yo-Yo comes in and gets the first triple of this match here. Which, now, I don't know what's going to happen after the first few attacks. So this could literally go in any direction. I mean, early attacks, they know they got to triple out because they have the two back-to-back -back fails on their own side. So the best they can get is to 13 stars. And Tribe, they're shooting for 14. Obviously, they can't get the perfect war now. But time is no longer a factor in this match. As it's still Root Riders and Valkyries is the meta of what they're bringing and they're probably going to continue it. Yeah, I think, I mean, let's let's face it, Root Riders are not just used because of time. I mean, that's like a nice side effect of them getting used. It's as well about mm. power because, yeah. let's face it, Root Riders are insanely strong. That That's <laughs> that's the only thing you can, you can name it. They are really, really powerful, um, and it's really hard to defend them. And we, we see this over the day because overall we have a lot of three stars, even though people know that those strategies and those troops are going to uh, attack their villages and not that much can be done so now we have the next attack early warning abilities yet again but the troops so far are splitting i think not really optimally to get towards the core right yeah that with the overgrowth on the core is basically turning this base into a ring base to move his troops all the way around and then come back and finish on the town hall. It's risky. We've seen it turn into one star several times here today as these root riders will continue to try to stay protected, but the queen has completely bailed from the warden and the root riders, and she's gone to, her, the, to the top side where if the barbarians and Valks open the wall, which they do, she technically now has access to grab the town hall. Yeah, she should be able to do so with her ability, especially Roy Champion with her ability as well. and. Carbon. There is no jinxing in this world that this attack would not three star. It's going to be a quick one as well. I mean, it doesn't matter. We already said it, but a really nice, a really, really nice attack. Very indeed. Very nice triple time as well on your side. It's obviously, like you mentioned, we're not focused on that anymore since we've had multiple fails from one side early attacks. We did have a fail that came in from Kronos in their very first attack for Tribe Gaming, which was a 95% two star. And then Yo-Yo did get that triple to help give them the advantage if Tribe does get a three star in their next attack. But if they fall short, now this match starts to become back to even, and then it's anyone's game. Yeah, that's that's for sure the, the possibility. I mean, so far both, uh... Teams did not start that great. Tribe had a good recovery um, for sure, but 
Well, we have seen surprises today. Nothing really happened as expected, I would say, going into this into this day with having the top eight teams then of the world currently in this competition. A lot of us were expecting a lot of 15 scores. A lot of us were expecting a lot of um, perfect matches, like from both sides. Nothing of that really happened so far. So I feel like anything can really happen in those matches yeah. still. And there could be always a twist. We have seen plenty of one stars. And this means no team is safe until the match is really over. The one player that I believe we're not going to see Riders is, is from Rikiras, because I remember oh, yeah. back... Does Rikiras even have the Root Riders unlocked? Because I remember at one point, like, he didn't even have them unlocked because he was like, he didn't want to use them. And so I'm pretty sure he probably did, but I mean, I don't know. Maybe you and chat know, but yeah, we'll see. Probably a Lalo attack that will come in from Rikiras. I, th I think at all costs, he doesn't want to use Root Riders. He wants to use his favorite attack, probably Lalo. I don't know if he's going to attack next. We'll have to see as Tribe is going to be up next. They're up next indeed. And well, Lalo would be a great, a nice mm -hmm. thing to watch. Instead, it's Elected Dragons. I'm happy with that one as well because it's no Root Riders. So what is going to be the case? He's, I mean, this king combination is just unbeatable. I think... Have you ever seen, like, by the pros, not in your Creative Master series, okay, but like by the pros mm -hmm. in a really serious competition, have you seen yeah. anyone not using the gauntlet, the giant gauntlet, no. with the Rage Vial? Yeah, that's the most common that I'm seeing out of these pros. But actually, from a lot of the comments and like casual people that I've seen, they're actually using a vamp stash on their king, and I'm very confused as to why. <laughs> and they just don't know the power of the, the pairing up the giant gull. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there uh, utilizing vamp stash, using it with uh, not even the giant gauntlet. And I'm telling you, giant gauntlet rage vial, if you're not using it, you should be. Yeah, I see that as well a lot of times of like people calling it the unvin like invincible barbarian king with a fox mm -hmm. together and then like vamp stash and everything, which I feel like is more like a meme attack. But people are really thinking it's it's re re really good for whatever reason. But hey, it, it it sounds fun. Don't get me wrong. I just don't think it's strong if you want to three star, and that's kind of showcase for all of those pros because ever we as we said we haven't really seen it as the troops are slowly going down for Nibrax. And there's still a little bit of the back end, but the Royal Champ is not even deployed yet. Yeah, the RC now just goes down. She's coming across the base from the right side. She can go straight into the Ricochet Cannon area. Oh, pulls some ground skeletons. Oh, uses a poison on top of her to help clear the skellies. As the RC did go invisible, but the Ricochet Cannon is getting some skips across. Pops their ability. More ground skeletons are there in front of the RC. Giant bomb as one e drag is still left alive. Inferno goes down. Pops Queen ability. And just like that, the base is gone. Three star from Nibrax and Tribe will keep the lead. They keep the lead indeed. A nice three star for Nibrax. Getting the Tribe back on track. They failed once so far in this entire competition, um, which was earlier from Kronos, but they're now back on track and early attack. Still have to hope for a defense on the same side. They have yeah. to still get nonstop three stars because they so far have struggled in the beginning of this match. They have only claimed one out of three possible attacks, a three star, which mm -hmm. is kind of uncommon by them. Yeah, that's very, very, very uh, just not expected. Like We would expect them to be putting up at least 14, almost perfect war, especially when they know they're going up against Tribe, who obviously before this match haven't failed through the group stage. And you never know. It's just one little thing can cost you a match here, but there's still a few more attacks to come in. Anything can happen as we're seeing Rigatores coming in with a Queen Charge Lalo. Wait, is this is, am I really, do I have my glasses on? This is a Queen Charge Lalo, it's, this is, this is crazy we're seeing this. Hello? I mean, Let's say it how it is. The attack of Rigatoris earlier with the Electric Dragons was really close. And I mean, Rigatoris is known for his crazy queen charges now for years. So I guess he's going back to comfort where the time is not as relevant anymore. And it's mm -hmm. just going in with a queen charge, which I really enjoy. I think, I mean, come on. It's our first queen charge. I think I would have never thought even that I would say this. But this is the first queen charge we're seeing today in a pro match. I mean, that's this, wild is crazy typically queen charge always the most used strategy by far by pros and the only thing he has to be careful about i feel like with this queen charge or queen charge in general 
is the queen going down through her ability with a frozen arrow. Otherwise, frozen arrow is literally just god tier with those queen charges together because it's just so, so strong. But the one issue you do have to be keep in mind is if your queen goes through ability by being forced, you may lose her because the frozen arrow doesn't give you a lot of health recovery when you burn the queen ability. So she dies many, many times through ability for many players. So you just have to keep that in mind as it could be a side effect. And you have to keep that queen nice and healthy charging on through. The take a look at that charge so far. This looks really, really great. The Mojo Arch Tower, though, is it going down since that thing can hurt a lot of quite a bit? I mean, it's not the strongest of those new merge defenses, but it can for sure be a difference maker. The Queen, though, he has to be careful. The queen, he has to pay attention. The Queen ability has been used early, which is uh, really, really nicely um, multitasking by him. Different, a lot of groups are coming in, and this looks yeah. really solid. Nice freeze on the poison spell scatter as he continues to loop his way around with two more freezes. And these balloons will path their way up. The queen does just go down with that defensive king there. But he's even got some back in balloons to make its way to the top side to help grab the mortar and eventually move his way into the Grand Warden Altar. And this will be a three star here from Riga Torres. Getting another triple here for early attacks. But we still have for Tribe Gaming, Exorcist and Rikeres. And then the early attacks, their final attacker is going to be Yada. Yeah, I'm just checking the time right now as well, because mm -hmm. this wasn't, it, it was not the fastest, don't get me wrong, but with like yeah. two minutes and 16 seconds, it wasn't even that slow uh, for an attack. So really nice to see some other strategies coming in as well. The safer option, the safer approach for Rigatoris for sure, um, comparing to the Electric Dragon attack he has done earlier. So great job to him. And now it's back to Tribe. I mean, they have everything in their hand for obvious reasons. But yeah. they can as well still fail and fall short with some of their attacks. I'm not really expecting them to, I don't know, switch their strategy up too much because they had great success for, so far with it. But I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. And you said it as well, Riku Torres is still left and he is a master of Lalo. So we could see some more Lalo from him as well. He absolutely is. And they're just not worried about time. They're worried about getting those three stars here and the attacks and do they bring, well, I don't know. Rikiris doesn't bring queen charges. Yeah, he brings like Zap Lalos or kind of really the hero dives, getting some fantastic value into those Lalo type of attacks. And this is exactly what he is doing, the Zap Lalo. I remember Rikiris, he was playing in a match in the Great Master Series that he was talking about, talking with Yo-Yo, and he was making a, a joke about his own wall breaking ability using wall breakers in a base and he was uh making a joke that he is not skilled in that and so in terms of charging into the base with a queen charge so this are where he is really really good and he just absolutely crushes these types of bases here he's got three wall breakers to try to bring his heroes in towards the town hall and maybe he could grab the town hall with his heroes that is so much value that would be a lot of value indeed. But I feel like as well, it's like a huge understatement that uh, Rigo Taurus, he, uh, Rikiris, um, who can arguably, I mean, you can easily say that that he is one of the best, if not even the best player in the world, um, <laughs> that he can't really do his war breaks. I think <laughs> he's really good with them. I think he knows exactly what he is doing. And so far, he is trying to push towards that multi front tower with the Queen, the King, is doing some quick work off that defensive client castle while the Lalo is starting with the Blimp then for the Town Hall. Yeah, as this Blimp can help grab the Town Hall, double rages are right into the core of this base, protecting and surrounding the Town Hall, the Eagle Artillery, the multi arch Towers. As he drops that freeze as the Town Hall is going down with Yetis. And the brilliant thing is you can go with Yetis because you've already lured out the Clan Castle. So if you don't want to lure out the Clan Castle, then Yetis would not necessarily be the great option because it would pull out any ground thing uh, like ice golems or lava hounds here. But that's not going to matter in this one because Rikiras is just overwhelming this base with these balloons absolutely crushing on through. And this is going to be another three star here for Tribe Gaming. And to me, what the impressive thing is always with those Lalo attacks, especially from like players like Rikiras or Stars as well as someone who is like in the middle of the attack, it kind of looks close. And then you're looking back at the army scroll bar of them and you're noticing, wait a second, they have another hound and 10 more loons. And you're like, oh yeah, of course, yeah, never mind. It was never even close to begin with. So really great attack by him, getting another three star. 
and I think this is his 39th three star in a row. One more three star, oh, he has 40 no. triple in a <laughs> row, um, which is insane. I think he has so far not failed with this account um, in and on tower 16, which is really, really crazy to just even think about it. The moment when you said it, you just had to say I it. I said it I after mean, the attack. I, I said it I, after I the mean, attack. <laughs> But your your Jinx power is so good that it'll just stay and last till tomorrow. You know, it lasts more than 24 nope. hours. And so, uh, Coco... It has cooldown. Co it doesn't have cooldown. You're absolutely not. There's no way. Coco took out Gaku. Like, Coco's power is so strong. Gaku couldn't even survive it. And I don't think Rikira is going to survive yours from tomorrow. But well, I guess we'll have to find out. Make sure you guys are tuned in for tomorrow, which is the final day of the World's Warm-Up Playoff Competition, where first place, whoever wins, is getting $10,000 with a $30,000 prize pool total overall between these teams. And we have Yada to come in with this final attack here. And a triple would put them to 13. And Tribe would have to get a two-star to tie it, but then they'll still be able to get percentage to still win. So Yada, at this point, knows he's got a triple. And I really want to see his favorite attack, what he loves to do, which is Super Bowlers. But uh, odds of bringing Super Bowlers is probably not likely. We'll have to see because obviously the Root Riders Valks is just so strong. Yeah, I'm just reading the chat as well. And do you know what Coco just said? Talking oh, about uh... Jinx powers? Uh -huh. Do you know on what triple streak Yata is so far? Oh, no. On 45. No. Oh, I'm, okay. I, I'm just uh, reading what Coco is saying, okay? Like, oh, you Coco, cannot, you you cannot believe to... You cannot okay. blame me for this. Well, Yata is on Gaku, 45 three stars. Rip to Yata. In a row. Can Yata is going to get hit tomorrow. Can Yata oh. somehow get another three star rating and put himself to 46? Those players are just on a different level. It's, it's incredible. What? And I think they are even too good for us to do anything about jinxing. Even Coco's jinx power I don't think is enough. And he should attack hopefully really soon and as the next player for early attacks. Yeah, can they get to 50 in a row? There's so many clashers out there are just happy to get two in a row, you know? Maybe three in a row, that's like, if they ever get seven in a row in a CWL, like, they are rejoicing. But Yada is going for what, 46 in a row here? Okay, well, here we go. It is indeed the Root Riders, but do we have, yeah, we do have a handful of Velks and four Skeleton Spells. But you know what I'm happy about right now? We do not see the Overgrowth spell. So I think we already safe to say that it's not going to be a one star. And as I'm saying that, everything's going to the flank. But I think that's that's fine because the Lock Launcher is opening up the core uh, for the Queen. She should be able to reach that town on no problem. And the entire Root Rider entire group of root riders are completely avoiding the town explosion which is massive for him he's having the king though spinning to the outside which is not optimal typically and with that tunnel being secured he does find that trineo trap on the opposite side so that won't affect the rest of his troops as the rod champion burns her ability has hogs that are spawning up as his queen and king both have their abilities using some freezes as the king is now to the top side he's Kind of on the outside, he had to beat through some walls in order to get on through as he freezes up the multi and the monolith with queen ability and a freeze still to go. Should be able to go through as his RC barely is going to be able to stay alive with that freeze spell. Yes, and this is going to be indeed the next three star for him. Again, oh, I was about to say below the 1 minute 30 mark, but the one storage was still alive. So it is a three star and meantime won't really matter anyways, but this is forcing Tribe to at least, well, get a two-star with a solid percentage and three-star to really safely win this match. Yeah, it's looking real easy here for Tribe to coast her way through with a two-star, let alone Exorcist is obviously going to be going for a three-star to put them up to 14, as the percentage is at 97 that we have here from early attacks, and then Tribe is at a 79, but with a three star would put them to a 99. So, I mean, early attack still putting up a very high percentage, but stars at the end of the day is what's going to be the difference maker. And these pros know that they need to be getting perfect wars to be winning. And in every single war here today, a perfect war would get you the victory. So it's not been a perfect perfect. We haven't seen that. And maybe... Are these teams going to be able to pull off any more perfects? I mean, we've seen one of them, but not too many after that. 
we have one more match after this one so anything can still happen today we can still see this magical unicorn which is a 15 15 uh match right so we mm -hmm. it's still possibly for us to, to see one of those but for now we have the tribe last attack and they're going in right now with the root riders again with the overgrowth spell i'm hoping for the best well 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 with the root riders and Vel. He's going to move on through where he's going to use that overgrowth early, early warden ability. Is it going to be on the town hall? He's waiting. He's waiting as long as possible until that warden ability disappears. And indeed, there is the overgrowth to help make the town hall invisible and every, the monolith as well as he's going to path his way around the space. Yes, walking around that overgrowth spell location. Everything is now splitting up. Ice Golem freezing things up yet again. Uh, King with the Royal Champion making the way towards the back end. And now the overgrowth spell is gone. There goes the Rage. Do yes, some of the Root Riders are going for the Town Hall. That would be amazing, but there is no spells left. The Digi of the Warden is starting the Town Hall, and the Town Hall should go down. Town has been secured. He's got the two stars. King ability is used as well. RC, all the abilities. There's nothing else he can do. No spells to place. No abilities to hit. Is just sitting back and watching his troops clearing this base. That king gets the model left as the royal champion will be able to jump. Oh no, I think it's RC. Yeah, RC grabs that final building. Queen comes around. And Exorcist delivers a three star, putting Tribe Gaming to 14 stars overall and continuing their run in the upper bracket. And they will be our winners here today, sending early attacks down to the lower bracket where they still have a chance to try to make their way to try to get the revenge against Tribe if they make it to the grand finals. It is time now for Navi taking on Sychronic here. And of course, we've got ourselves the Root Rider Valkyries here, Coco. Go. Now we just said Synchronic like to bring a jump spell and they're doing the exact opposite on this <laughs> one. They're bringing that overgrowth spell. They're changing it up here on Kazuma's base. Now I wonder if they're doing this because maybe they moved maybe any potential traps that might have changed it up for the way that the king would have been pathing if Navi thought that that was the way that they were going to go. Now the root riders are pathing in, of course, with the warden. The warden is going to protect them with his abilities in here, coming in already to protect them against all of these multi infernos. Now take note that all of these multi infernos are raged up from the enemy rage spell towers. And he does use the overgrowth now as he's trying to path his way towards the town hall. The poison did get launched, so he's going to have to fight through it. But he's trying to now. He won't go to the town hall. He has to loop around it as the queen is taken out the top side. The king still has his giant gauntlet to be able to use the ability as the royal champion is also down to the bottom side as he's trying to pick this base apart one at a time. But time is a tick in here, you know? I mean, every second matters as he uses a freeze onto the multi or onto the monolith as the tunnel has been crushed as the RC ability now has gone off as she's gonna haste her way through the final set of buildings. This was a pretty quick one as well. Again, the overgrowth spell left the town hall up later on. Did not make a difference in getting it down. They backtracked, got it done, did the job well, and they did it pretty quickly. I'd have to double check to see how quick it actually was. A minute 13. That is how fast that attack was here for Sychronic. So Simon getting it done. So, you know, Navi, they're going to have to try to beat that pace. I mean, we have a player by stars. We got a 61 second attack earlier against the base. So that's going to be really the mark to hit. Try to get under or around 60 seconds. Minute 13, that's really, really good for this team here. These pro players want to be under a minute 30. But if you can't hit a minute 30, you definitely want to be getting that three star. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. Three star first. Quick attacks second. That's yeah. definitely the order to pay attention on. Now, the pressure is on Navi a little bit now because 1 minute 13 is fairly quick, 
Mm -hmm. I would say that's one of the quicker attacks. Even if we have seen quicker from them, I think that is definitely going to put a little bit of pressure on them. Uh, we'll see if that makes a difference or not in their performance, though. We'll have the next attack coming in any second now from Navi. And I'm assuming it's going to be P. Castro. He really likes to attack mm -hmm. first for Navi, and he always brings the healer puppets for his queen. He always likes to have that when he burns that queen ability to get some more healers to pop up. The only thing is, like, if I were to use the healer puppet, and whenever you burn the ability for the queen with that, the healer spawn all over the queen. Yes, that's great. It could, like, pull uh, to help, like, kind of protect her, but it also kind of pulls a lot of traps. So it's kind of, uh, you have to be very careful where you burn that queen ability if you have the choice. A lot of times, you don't have a choice. You have to burn it wherever it is to keep her alive. And the healers, though, unfortunately, may get picked off pretty quick. So let's see what P. Castro does. Indeed, it is Root Riders and Valkyries, as we're going to have the queen with the healer puppet indeed. Yes, you're right. Now I do see them on my stream. They do burn pretty quickly. I hope that it doesn't happen on this one because you can get really nice value, as you mentioned, by getting some additional health, especially if you lose the unicorn. It's really nice to get some additional health back up on the queen because she's one of the strongest heroes in the game. Now the overgrowth spell in already on the Town Hall Monolith and Eagle Artillery. Those Eagle Artillery shots are not going to be hitting hard on these Root Riders. Now. The spell does not stop the clan castle troops from emerging, though. As you can see, they were all slowed down here by those ice golems, but not a lot of defenses were still up to slow them down. With that king being placed to the, I believe, is he in the core with the troops? I think he's at the top side of the base. There's a few Rue Riders are actually coming up there. Uh, the queen is actually making her way down to the bottom, and oh no, the king is also down at the bottom as well with the queen. So they're making their way through there as giant bombs have popped from the bottom side, but the town hall is now back active, and we have an invisibility spell near this town hall, so that could be a problem as he's already deployed the royal champion. Yeah, we've seen it oh, before no. when it looks like this with the monolith there, the eagle artillery hitting hard as well. Oh, I'm getting nervous because there's a lot of major defenses. We are missing the multi inferno here as well. As you can see, that will take down the unicorn. So good thing he does actually have the healers. There we go. They do pop onto that queen there. One of them is in range of this multi inferno. It looks like it will be taking a bit of damage. We'll be pulling them even closer. Wow. Though, but look at how much health the queen is getting back. Look at that. These teams are fighting for speed and it's costing them the one stars potentially. Will this queen be able to get the town hall with the invisibility spell? I don't believe so. And the ego artillery is still raining fire down. That queen's going down and it is a one star. Not good for P. Castro here of Navi. And like we said, if you just focus on getting three stars, that might just be winning you the war just by that. You are using the overgrowth, costing you to run around and costing so many one stars. This is the most amount of one stars we've ever seen because of this attack. It could be a fast triple, yes, but it seems like it's almost at this point like 50-50. Let's use the overgrowth. Let's get a fast triple. But if it doesn't get a fast triple, it's a one. That's a huge yeah. risk. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely in the mind at the moment. That's where it is. The fact that they think that they have to get those triples down and triple fast is definitely costing it. Yeah. We've seen it not once, not twice, maybe even like four times now where it's fallen short like this. So maybe later on, maybe even tomorrow, we might see a whole switch. Maybe we won't be seeing these quick attacks. Maybe it'll be all about getting the safe triples on the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would assume they're going to have to take this and really think about it like is it worth the risk of using that overgrowth on the town hall to avoid it to try to speed it up so what does that mean for everyone that's watching and just doing your regular war attacks i would say probably don't necessarily do that because it may result in a one star especially when it comes to your clan war league you don't want to leave your clan your uh, clan with a one star in the cwl that definitely won't be good but the root run uh, did you do that Coco. No, I would uh, never. Oh, no. All right. I mean, what? if there's anyone in chat that knows, I'm sure there are people. Let us know. Uh oh. It, could it be Coco <laughs> that one star is in her clan? And did you cost Did you cost your clan a potential promotion? I would never. Coco? I would did never. You? What? What are these accusations? <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. 
Well, I guess we'll have to see what Sikrana can do after a one-star from Navi. Yeah, it's tough to recover from that, especially the mindset. Going into yeah. this match now with such an offense-heavy meta, knowing that you are two-star behind when sometimes even just a few buildings and one-star is the difference. They have to make sure that their, their game is on point and they have to get triple after triple and hope for a defense. Now, Synchronic are very comfortable at the moment. Mm -hmm. They just have to make sure that they are playing it safe, getting those triples down, and they don't have to stress about time at all at the moment. With General X coming in with the Root Riders, and we have Queen down to the bottom side, King as well. Well, we're gonna go with a jump. No overgrowth here, okay. Definitely don't wanna take the risky approach there as the jump is gonna give King access to the Rigisha Cannon. But unfortunately, we have an Ice Golems that are going to slow this King down. Yeah, King goes to ability, will exactly as you said, be slowed down in here in range of the Monolith as well. And General X sees that, uses a freeze to stop that Monolith from hitting his King to keep him alive a little bit further, which then redirect onto the Valkyries coming in from the right-hand side with those Root Riders, of course. Now, no Overgrow spell, as we said. We've got that jump spell. The King, unfortunately, doesn't make it all the way into the Town Hall compartment, does, but does clear out pretty nicely on the south-hand side. With a freeze onto the Town Hall here, the Queen's making her way to the left. Unfortunately, she was going down, but the Rage brings Ooh. her back up. And the Mindlift, though, is locking onto the ward and taking him down. And what's going to go for this town hall here? A couple of root riders have made their way there. Super minis coming out of the siege barracks, taking out the monolith here as he continues his way around. Headhunters to the top side, king, as the town <gasps> hall. Wait, 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 wait. We still have RC ability. We're okay, right? We're okay. Wait for it. Queen no longer has her ability. A couple of super barbs can come in to go try to help the town hall. Two packers. He's fine. He's fine, right? Oh, there goes the Royal Champion ability. She regains some health. She's super speedy. Queen's not going to be able to help her out, though, in this compartment. Good thing she was made invisible. And Ooh. he's got the town hall down. I got nervous for a second there, but General X kept his cool, and he got it done. He got another triple on the board, which will hold them two stars in the lead, even if Navi triple their next attack. Imagine getting a 99% one star. You know, that couldn't have happened to any of us, right? There's no way uh, it's you. Wait, um, but I mean, last building, town hall, very risky approach, but it pays off and gets the three star here. So well done to General X. Synchronic, all they got to do is just coast their way with more triples or even a two star. They'll be fine because of a single one star from P. Castro to start off the match. Yeah, the triple ice golem, I think that slowed down a lot in the heart of the base there for the king. Now you use the triple ice golem usually to slow down these smash type of attacks, which is uh, i.e. the uh, root riders, yeah. which will hold everything in place whilst they take damage. He did try and help out with that freeze spell, but unfortunately the king died off a little bit too soon, which did make it a little bit risky there on the south, but it still paid off uh, at the end. Yeah, I was able to get a hey, three stars to three star here yep. and helping your team, trying to get to that perfect war. And if you win this match here, you're going to then take on Tribe Gaming in the semifinals. And the winner of that will go to the grand finals and await the team coming from the lower bracket. And you'll have a huge advantage in the upper bracket here as these teams are competing for $10,000 first place prize here in the clash of clans world warm-up there's no golden ticket or anything like that on the line this is just for the prize money here and you know kind of it's for some bragging rights to say you won the first kind of clash of clans esports tournament in 2024 yeah, definitely. And mm -hmm. they're giving us a fantastic taste of what's to come from the upcoming seasons as well. Yeah. Because honestly, Clash of Clans, the World Championship is just around the corner as well. Yep, indeed. And you know, it's going to be here before you know it. And I can't wait to see what will happen throughout this year. And whatever's happening now is going to be completely different than what we're going to see later in the end of the year because it always changes, right? So the beginning of last year to the to the end of last year, it was completely different. It, that's what happens every single time. Metas change. You have different changes and balances. So you never know what we're going to see here. But Gaku is going with something different of super bowlers and a warden walk and they know that 
hey time's not a factor so don't worry about the Rue Riders. Let's go with a different attack that's going to get us to three star. Now, Super Bowlers are quite nice because they do some additional damage further on from the defense that they're targeting. At this moment, Gaku is just being very patient. He's using some additional healers. That last one deployed there just to make sure that that Warden doesn't go to ability too soon. And it, combining the Warden with the Rage Gem with these Super Bowls is going to be huge. Now, it will not speed them up, but it will make sure that they are enraged doing some additional damage. And he's seen that there is an early single Inferno, so that Ice Golems will be coming in and freezing it and tanking it for the bowlers, jumping over these walls into the core of Philip's base. And here with the Ice Combs coming out, popping that Warden Internal Tome to help protect everything, making his way to that Town Hall. The Super Bowlers are going to take the jump, get those bounces, skipping on through, as we have those balloons that were trying to path their way into the core to help pull some red air bombs, which is probably littered everywhere around the Town Hall to help protect the healers, as the Double Pekkas are now moving their way on the outside. Yeah, we got that skeleton spell to distract the monolith that is on the back end of this base. The bowlers are still alive in this compartment with the healers now, which will help push them even further, keep them alive up against that damage. The scatter shot will be going down. He's freezing, I think, the enemy queen there, which is really nice. So he'll be able to get some additional buildings down. Oh, is it going to be enough? Uh -oh. We have two freezes still left, though, and the royal champion ability. Oh, boy, the enemy queen still is up. The king has got a lot of health. The RC goes invisible with two freezes and the monolith up. The healers have transferred to some Pekkas, luckily distracting the defensive king and taking him down. The RC now goes to the enemy queen, one shots her with the RC ability and a freeze. He should be able to get this. Yeah, there goes the freeze. There is a bomb tower though, which is not very hog rider friendly. But the Royal Champion gains some health. She's speeding up there. The last few, uh, the last freeze coming in there as well, just to stop that incoming damage. It's not enough. Gaku has recovered from his previous attack and he's got another triple on the board. And what a beautiful one as well. Nice that we get to see some Super Bowlers in this tournament as well. It's always nice to see different metas, different attacks coming through here and not always being Root Riders and Valkyries. There we go with some different of Super Bowlers. And once the war they know is not going to come down to time, they don't need to bring the Root Riders and Valkyries anymore. They can bring what they're more comfortable with. And that's the thing is a lot of these pro pl players are not really experienced with the Root Rider Valks. Yeah, they might have been doing for the last week maybe the last two weeks or so really practicing it trying to test their bases against it for sure but if something goes wrong in the attack they're more likely not going to be able to recover as quick of course they can recover they're pros they know how to do it but an attack like this let's say super bowlers gaku's done so many more times he can then adjust on the fly to help save and get that three star yeah, comfort is definitely where they have to focus on, especially in this match at the moment. And honestly, I don't know if I'd recommend that as well to do the same thing on the next few matches as well. Because as you said before, they are slipping up in trying to get those fast attacks done. So being comfortable with what you're attacking with might be the key to success at the moment. Einstein is bringing in, might be a queen charge, Lala. I think this might be, is this the second one we've seen today now? I think so, yeah. Rigator has brought one uh, earlier with early attacks. Now Einstein wants to bring his own. And so I guess the only way we can see different attacks at the moment is if one of the attacks fails, so then they start changing up the attack. It's not going to be always Root Riders. As you can see, once they know that the result of the war can be something completely different, they're now switching it up with a whole different mindset. So they all have that idea of time is playing a critical role as the queen's ability is almost forced but he's okay oh she's taking quite a bit of damage good thing the the unicorn is also still alive a raid spell will help regain health there also help her get the enemy queen down now he beautifully distracted the mortar on that left hand side because mortars are not the flame flinger's friend so he can get that flame flinger to do some additional damage there is an expo still present there so it will start to approach it we'll see how much uh, that he's able to distract it with his queen already going in here. The second wall breaker coming in as well. 
will open up the walls for his queen. She's still struggling a little bit low on health. Good thing she's getting those clan castle troops down and will be able to push forwards into this compartment now with these beautiful loons coming in here as well to test for any traps. As that king ability went off, trying to take out the enemy queen. And yes, he does in just a matter of two hits as the queen need perfectly freezes that single target inferno rages the queen up and now he uses a third wall breaker to give queen access to that town hall again some fantastic value is he going to freeze yet again and he does and notice what he didn't do is freeze that ground expo as it is locked onto the queen you don't want to freeze the expo so it stops hitting the queen and then once it on frozen it would have went to the flame flinger which could definitely be very bad so keeping the have the queen tank it as the warden now is moving with the lalo and popping the ability to path towards the mile but the queen needs to grab this town all oh invisibility coming in clutch there keeping that queen alive she still has her ability in the final free spell coming in from einstein on the scatter shot and the town hall which stops the loons taking some damage there on the right hand side however the double uh, multi beams coming in there from the town hall and the inferno on the north hand side at the moment the queen's walking for cleanup on the top hand side of the base she should be able to retrag back into the town hall compartment with the royal champion and get that town hall down and what a beautiful queen charge Lala. a lot of multitasking was needed on this one but he gets it done another triple on the board for synchronic three four Three. They're looking to get two more triples here, and they don't they don't care what Navi will do for the rest of their attacks. They can even just get a triple and a two star, and they will be fine in this match. To think that that's all you need against a team like Navi is crazy because of a one star that came in from P Castro with that very first attack, which was a one star 88%. And if we do take a look, and you know, if we have time on our mind, granted. They are not going for time anymore. They're at five minutes, 20 seconds with three attacks. You know, that's still relatively pretty quick, even having a Queen Charge Lalo in the mix there. Yeah, well, time doesn't really make a difference unless they get a one star 88. Now, the odds of that happening is a bit low, but it is nice <laughs> yeah. to see that they're still consistently getting some quicker attacks in there that we saw in the previous seasons. Town Hall 15 was definitely not a race of time. If anything, we saw a lot of time fails at Town Hall 15. Yeah, we did. And they were always going for the, th obviously going for the three stars. And when they got the three stars, it was so rewarding. This one. It is rewarding if you are, you know, if you're comfortably getting the three star. It's very nerve wracking if you're forgetting the town hall, overgrowthing it, running around, and then finishing on it. And it can pay off, it can get it done, but it can be very risky as well. So the next attacker we still have for Navi Stars, Klaus, and Kazuma. I'm thinking yeah. Kazuma's probably going to be next because recently Klaus has always been attacking last and the stars may come second to last. They do switch it up sometimes here, but typically a lot of these times, these pro players and these teams tend to stick with a certain order that the players come in so that they're always comfortable. They're like, okay, I always know I go first, so I'm gonna go first. I always know I come third, I'm gonna go third. So they don't have to be like, oh no, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. So then they're kind of rushing, which could cause them to make a mistake. Let's say if they're trying to get their army prepped and ready to go at the very last moment. Yeah, it makes them comfortable in a specific position as well. Like if you know that you can open a war and do a triple early can also help really well with your teammates uh, mindset into the remainder of the match. So putting your team in the best position possible can literally be the decider of the match because you're in the best headspace and that you're motivated to push forward. The one star, as we saw in this one, can be really tough to recover from, but not just by stars, but also mentally to push forward in the attack now. As you mentioned, Stars is up, in fact, next. Now he's got his heroes on the left-hand side, and he's combining the Lalo with some Zap Quakes, and he actually has one Bat spell in the combination here, too. Yeah, with the early Warden ability protecting this blimp flying across for the Town Hall, and sometimes that one Bat spell can be used, like, as a distraction for a Stone Slammer to help protect it as it moves around, but... Obviously, he went with that blimp to help secure the town hall as the invisibility spell also goes off as Stars is trying to fly the balloons around from the right side with the Royal Champion going in through the enemy RC to the top side as he's distracting the monolith to help protect these balloons pathing their way around. 
Yeah, we've also got the Diggy in there. Really nice value to get the Diggy. Always important to have the Diggy, I feel like, in the combination on these heroes, which helped stun that Monolith as well. We're pathing towards the single Inferno, which is not going to be able to get all of these loons down. The Eagle Artillery is one of the final buildings down, interestingly enough, and we have quite a quick Lalo coming in here. We just reached over that one minute mark. The amount of loons still up, as well as cleanup. Stars is being really quick with his attacks today indeed 61 seconds in the first one this one was like about 70 seconds really quick here for stars getting a three star and not even using the root riders and Velks coming in with a lalo and the only way to be quick with a lalo if you want to get it towards 60 seconds is you got to have everything come in in different compartments of the base and you can't come in with any queen charges no warden walks you got to start right away with the troops and then you have to think about spells coming down at the same time as the troops are down if you want to be quick yeah i mean we mentioned the bat spell now usually we see a lot of skeleton spells to distract why don't you tell us a little bit why that we have a bat spell instead of a skeleton spell to distract the defenses well if he's going air anyways the bat spell would just be an aid to the air if he had skeleton spells Anything that is ground in the area will target the skeleton. So for example, if there are ground expos, then the skeletons are going to get taken down even quicker due to the ground expo. So you might as well just go with something that already is an air and only air stuff will target it to help protect your air troops. So as Philip is going to come in with Root Riders and Valkyries, and he initially drops this jump to send this king right on in through and get some fantastic value here. Yeah, he's getting really nice value with his king pathing into here. Ability goes off and he can actually clear up multiple defenses at the same time. Now the scatter shots are enraged. He will have to go to revive here from the Phoenix before going for the scatter shots, which will actually help push away those clan castle troops from him so he can continue doing some damage before he goes down. Now the Root Riders with an additional heal through that bomb tower so that he can hold on to the Warden Ability just a little bit longer. As Valkyrie's super minions coming out of the siege barracks. Pekka's are running their way up to the top side. And now he pathing his way to the town hall with a Warden Eternal Tome and the Healing Tome to try to help bring them back up and using a freeze early enough so the defensive raid spell tower does not get activated as the Royal Champ is also now coming down to the bottom side, trying to distract the monolith with a skeleton spell. Yeah, Royal Champion can get some really nice value if she doesn't take too much damage. As you can see, the skeletons are also, they're just building up around that uh, monolith as well. A few of them do go down to the multi-inferno though, finally, but the Royal Champion gets it done. She still has the fox, which is making her go invisible over and over again, which helps protect her. The ability goes off, speeding her up and the amount of damage that she's doing. And it's all about cleanup. He's got it done. Another triple on the board for Synchronic. Now, dare I say it, what's going to happen with the final attack from them? Mark, Mark, Mark. Mark my words. <laughs> what will he do? Will it be able to be a three star or will it not get a perfect war? Perfect war. I mean, uh, hmm. I'm really thinking, how strong is this Jinxing power? How strong oh, no. is this? Okay, hold on. Mark, you will indeed get the second perfect war here for Skronik. You got it. There you go. I believe. Oh, I believe. The jinx. I believe. No, what do you mean? I believe in Mark. There's the jinx. I'm you jinxed before. My belief. You jinxed before. You know, don't worry. It's, it's the past. Don't worry about that. You know, it's, <laughs> it's not going to repeat itself. No shot. No. Of, of Mark, course Mark, not. Mark's going to do it. I believe. I'm, I'm a believer in well, Mark. We'll see. As long as it's not a one star 88, they will take there's the no victory. Way. There's no way it's a one star 88. There's, there's no chance. There's no chance Mark pulls that off. But of course, we have now Kazuma and Klaus still to come in for Navi. So probably Kazuma is going to be next. And then Klaus usually will close it out of this war. But they do have the one star that is from Picastro. Obviously, once you see a one star, it's very demoralizing as a player when you see that on your own team. But at that point, you still know I got to bring three stars and still got to do my best 
it could be a practice moment you never know right against these bases and when these bases are specifically designed to try their best they know it's really difficult but try their best to stop those root rider valkyrie attacks yeah and at the end of the day they're not going home just yet as we mentioned many times before for those who just tuned in yeah. it is double elimination so even if navi get perfected they're not going home they'll just be yeah. jumping down to the lower bracket there are already some amazing teams down there yeah. it is looking like a very feisty lower bracket so i wouldn't want to be even in the lower bracket in this tournament so they could yeah. still have a chance. They just have to put in a little bit more effort to make it all the way to that grand finals. Yeah, no team has been eliminated yet, right? We will, though, eliminate two teams later today. So we have two more matches after this one, and both of those next matches will be elimination matches, meaning that if you lose that one, you are officially out of the tournament and you don't have a chance of making it to tomorrow. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. Nobody wants to go home at this point. There's a lot on the line. Thirty thousand dollars total, and first place ten thousand dollars. So every attack matters. And Kazuma is in with another attack, and we have more Root Riders combined with the Super Barbarians and the Valkyries. We're starting off on the right hand side. He's also got some Zap Quakes. Where is the most value to get these down? Hmm. Well, let's see. We have a multi... No, we're not going with multi. Going for the multi-archer tower. That's what I was trying to say. You know, multi? Not the Inferno. Of course, of course. As he's pathing his way to the eagle artillery. Going to lure out typically ice golems, which are really going to help try to slow down the attacking army. And many people probably don't realize or didn't take notice that remember Lava Hounds used to be meta in the defensive clan castle. Well, in the recent update, Lava Hounds got weaker on the defensive side only. Because when a Lava Hound now pops, it pops with less Lava Pups than before. So that's why a lot of these teams also are starting to pick Ice Golems instead because of that change too. Yeah, it's interesting that he actually brought the log launcher in here as well. It's almost as if he knew that his root riders wouldn't be opening them up all the way on that right hand side. There is still one present on that monolith, but will be dying out slowly here. Now he has got a bunch of freezes still remaining and Kazuma uses them on the town hall to protect a lot of these troops that are still remaining. Those hogs from the Royal Champion, the Queen's trying to break through these walls for cleanup. And as you can see on that left, he used that skeleton spell for the headhunter to get the enemy king down. Very nicely done. Navi with yet another triple on the board. They are really trying to recover from that one star that they had earlier on as the opener of this match. Well done to you, Kazuma. Getting it done now. They're down two stars, though, 12 to 10, as Sikronik is looking to finish it off with one more attack here. And they do it. Mark up to you to get the second perfect war here this today in the competition. And then we'll have Klaus to close it off for Navi with one final attack. And he's coming with a Lalo attack before, so we'll see if he does that again. But well, Mark, 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 will it be the Root Riders and Valks? Or are you going to stick to something that is more likely or kind of more comfortable for you to come in with a three star? Well, he needs a safe two star for the win. Yeah. So how safe is he going to play is going to be the decider of what he's mm -hmm. going to bring. Maybe Root Riders and his plan is key. Maybe that's exactly what he's going to stick with because that's what his thought out plan is. Because sometimes if you change your plan midway through war, even if you have the lead, if you play it in a different direction, it could still cost you the attack. So let's see yep. what he's got. Oh, oh, Electro Titans, probably combining it with a Water Mork, which will help push these Electro Titans into the middle of this base. As you can see, he's getting that going there on the right hand side. A few loons as well in this comp to make sure that he can test for any potential traps. And he's also starting to clear out on the south hand side. Now, this is a very favorite strategy from Town Hall 15. With these Electro Titans, five of them, as that Fling Flinger is going to try to grab the Ricochet Cannon from the bottom side. The Electro Titans are down with a jump as well to give him access straight into the Monolith compartment. The Town Hall as he's going to lure out the Clan Castle as well. As he has a handful of balloons moving in to test for Seeking Air Mines to really protect the healers. 
but he's still hanging on to this Warden Eternal Tome to really protect everything as they try to make their way closer to this Town Hall with double Poison Spell Towers. Now, as you see, the Clan Castle troops have emerged. He did not bring a Poison Spell, and the reason for this is that the aura from these Electro Titans do some additional damage on nearby traps, but also those clan castle troops. Now we've got them in range of that town hall. The healers are also taking some damage from this multi inferno. So it's a perfect time for Mark to use that warden ability to protect all these electro titans and the healers as well. Now, unfortunately, this multi inferno is still standing, which will be doing a lot of damage on these healers. Yeah, as that queen is trying to path her way around, does have her. No, no more. The queen is gone. Flame Fling is probably going to be opening up here soon as the king ability goes off with that giant gauntlet with one more rage and a freeze the rush champion still has her ability and she's making her way to the top side goes invisible with that spirit fox and then she passes not to the multi but to the cannon to try to get towards that tesla farm now yeah this is just gonna be a little bit slow on the end here Royal champion does have her ability the fox is still alive as well which was making her invisible it's not gonna be up for much longer though one final invisible uh, four seconds, I think it is, for the Royal Champion there, which before she uses her Royal Champion ability, which chains from defense to defense. She's a little bit distracted by some traps, but it's not going to be enough to slow this attack down. And Mark has come in with not only just a triple, but is finalizing the stats and getting a perfect war down for Synchronic against not any team. They're facing Na'Vi as well, which is a very consistent team. Well done. The perfect war and Mark did get it done. Well done to you. Hey, there's no jinxing over here. I knew it, right? I knew it all along. Well done. And that's our second perfect war that we are seeing here today. And we'll probably be seeing more either later or tomorrow for this day two of the playoffs. And we still have two more matches to come after this one. So you don't want to go anywhere because those have even more on the line because those are elimination matches. You lose those, you are officially eliminated and you are going home and you don't have a chance to try to make your way back and try to get into the grand finals, even though a run from the lower bracket after losing your very first match is very difficult. So we're going to see now Klaus to come in to close it off here for Navi. And my guess is probably going to be some sort of Lalo attack. Oh, we'll wait and see. Sometimes he switches it up at the end. Sometimes it doesn't. It just depends what they're in the mood for. Since at the moment, it doesn't really matter. It might affect his stats, though, since we have got some win streaks, which we may or may not have ruined. <laughs> So we'll just wait and see. But again, I'm very excited to see because we had Synchronic. They had some really fast attacks. This one, they did slow down a little bit because they did have the advantage. Maybe that played a role in some of these slower attacks. But in the past, they have done some really fast attacks and they're going to be facing Tribe in the next round. So I'm wondering how uh, that match is going to turn out. Yeah, with the Queen now placed, has one healer on her. Probably the healer puppet if he pops any more. Is this going to be a queen charge? A Lalo, as we got an early, early warden with the balloons and the blimp to fly across. Warden ability goes to protect the blimp flying towards this town hall as the king ability also is taking out that eagle with ease. Yeah, we've got that warden ability protecting these loons on that right hand side. It does wear off though. So we'll have to wait and see how that continues. We've got freezes coming in very nicely, freezing some of that splash damage. We have more loons that cleared out that north and side compartment before pathing towards the left. There's a lot of loons scattered around the base. There is that super dragon, which is doing quite a bit of damage in the middle of this base, but with three freezes and the haste still remaining, is it going to be enough to slow this one down? I don't think so. Klaus getting it done, of course. Klaus is delivering a three star and unfortunately that one attack that was the second attack in this match from Pete Castro being a one star is all the different difference three star three star three star three star and then a perfect war from Sokranic all across the board and the only one difference unfortunately for Pete Castro not able to get it done and that is very out of character, you know, from Pete Castro, you 